we are going to start the security series of AKS, okay? Well, it is not different than what is usually going on on my channel, as you see, um, trying to complete as much as possible about AKS. But I was getting a lot of comments, a lot of requests through LinkedIn as well to cover the security aspect of AKS. So we are moving towards it and then we'll get back to the uh, original series as well but it doesn't matter everything about AKS uh, as of now. So this is the very first video on AKS security where we'll talk about security, AKS security to be specific uh, in, 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 in overall, okay? Then we'll make a plan to cover the entire security if we have to run the microservices or application on AKS, how to make our cluster or Kubernetes as secure as possible, okay? So uh, I'm creating a separate playlist for this one, uh, Kubernetes, but if you're following the original playlist, you'll find these videos there as well. So we got one playlist for the entire AKS and one playlist for the lab, and another one is for the security, okay? Because there are people who only wants to talk about the security, so that playlist would be for them. It would be easy to find the videos there as well. Okay, so let's get start, started about the Kubernetes uh, security. Well, uh, the best way to explore the security uh, is applying the same principles, security principles on anything, and then figure out what could be the best way to secure those items. What I'm trying to say, let's apply defense in depth principle here on AKS and then start working on it one by one. What it means, it simply means there are multiple layers whenever we run our uh, workload and we need to secure each and every layer, okay? I've already created a couple of videos on defense of depth. So if you are not aware of it, or if you wanna know a little more, you can go check those videos out. And if you're already aware, so let's get started. Okay, so what can I do? Let me, let me share my uh, screen and I think, let's suppose this is our AKS, uh, this is our AKS cluster, okay? This is our AKS cluster and we have these nodes running on this cluster. We can call them node uh not noid node and this is also node okay inside the node if your guess is part then you are correct inside the node let's suppose these are two pods running okay here we have these two pods running these are the pods let me call them pods okay these are pods all right Now, it's, it's a very simple architecture as of now. This is your cluster, your AKS cluster, on which we have two nodes running to take care of uh, the microservices or the pods. Maybe microservices are running inside the pods. Let, let, is, let, let, let me put it this way. So this is these are the uh, resources that is running on the Azure. There could be mul the multiple other objects as well, like deplo deployments and Aptiga set that comes later. But for now, this is what is uh, a high level uh, AKS cluster, okay? Now, I was talking about defense in depth. Let me put it defense in depth here, defense in uh, depth, okay? 
Now the very first layer is physical layer. I we need to need not to worry about it because this is in cloud. This is managed service, so Microsoft will take care of it. But the next layer is access and ID identity and access. Let me put it this way: identity and access. And this is something which is very important because it's all about identity now. Physical security is not the only security or perimeter security is not the only security. People are accessing your application from anywhere. They're logging into the portal and helping the organization to work on the applications and the resources from the vendors. So identity and access is very, very important. So we need to take care of that layer. Means, what means? Principle of least privilege. This is what is principle of least privilege. That principle we need to apply whenever we give access to users to access the resources in AKS. Now we'll talk about it in respect of the AKS. So we, 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 we have to provide access to the people who are working on AKS. So we need to follow the principle of least privilege. We'll, and it, uh, we're gonna create a separate video of all the Kubernetes RBAC and how to integrate it with the Azure AD uh, and take care of the access through the centralized place role bindings, cluster role bindings, those things that would come in the next video. So we need to take care of the identity and access management and the best way to do it is by applying principle of least privilege, okay? Cool, now, if your guess is perimeter, you are correct. We need to take care of the perimeter. For us, it would not fall inside the AKS. It would be like maybe we are applying AGIC or maybe application gateway or something else outside there. So on those public IPs, we can enable the DDoS protections or we can use the Cloudflare and, device, uh, and, and security devices like that from where the uh, traffic is coming in for the DDoS protection or we could use perimeter firewalls to identify and alert on malicious attacks, okay? So that is not something which is inside the AKS because we'll, we'll also talk about the entire architecture that AKS or AKS oriented architecture or microservice oriented architecture on AKS. Then you would realize we are not uh, uh, making AKS publicly available, but there are other resources. So perimeter is something, the way I said it would be taken care of, not a part of AKS as of now. So then we have networking. In our case, it's the node and the pods networking that need to be taken care of. We, we, we need to limit the communication. We do have the network policies that we can apply. We need to restrict inbound internet access and limit outbound, those kind of stuff. Then we have a compute layer, which is which is a node for us in, in, in case of the AKS, secure the access to these virtual machines, NSGs and those stuff. Then we have application, whatever application is running on this AKS cluster, we need to ensure there is uh, no vulnerabilities there. We need to ensure the sensitive data is stored in the secret, AKS secret, with the, with the help of uh, Vault, Azure Security Vault, uh, those kind of stuff we need to take care of. Then ultimately, we always have data center object, which is what is actually all the hackers are trying to hack or encrypt it like the ransomware. So whatever data we have, uh, right now we are talking about the AKS. So that's why I'm just trying to uh, differentiate about these layers as I explained the perimeter, uh, right? So data, we are not talking about the database, which if it is inside the AKS cluster, then of course, but usually we keep database outside the AKS cluster. So the data of 
your uh, application, which is inside the cluster, like the secrets, config maps, your, your disks, which are attached. So those need to be encrypted and taken care of, right? So that's how we are going to uh, work on security, AK security, okay? So the very first thing that we need to talk about is identity and access management. As we have seen already, this is the very first layer that we should talk about, explore, learn how to apply, and what are the different options we have here for this. Okay, so in production systems, you need to, before we go to the production system, let's see up till now, we have seen, we have done almost 20 labs using Cloud Shell, uh, and you have been, uh, we have been acting uh, as a root, directly jumping into the Cloud Shell. We are creating the AKS cluster through the portal and using the Cloud Shell with the same identity. So uh, I was root in all those labs. If you're following those, so you will be root in all those lab, which allowed you to do anything and everything in the cluster, right? But in production systems, you need to allow different users different level of access on different resources, right? And this is known as what? This is known as RBAC. This is known as RBAC. What is the full form of RBAC? It is role-based access control. This is what the RBAC means, okay? And this functionality will allow you to give access or follow the principle of least privilege. Users who wants the access X resource should have the access to the X resource. If, some, if there are users who wants to manage the entire cluster, they should have the access on the cluster. If there is an application running on the namespace, users should have the access of that namespace. That's how categorized and least privilege is applied, okay? So the, the benefit of establishing RBEG is that it is not only act as a uh, guardrail against the accidental deletion of critical resources, but, but also is an important security feature that limits full access to the cluster to, to, uh, uh, to mess around, let, let it, let, let's put it this way, okay? So our back will help us to secure the access, to simplify it, okay? Now, there are three concepts in AKS of our back, okay? And what is these three concepts? Let's see. Well, these are three objects. Let me put it this way, role. There is an object role. There is this object known as a uh, subject or principle, or you can say there is a role binding. Okay, these are three objects in AKS uh, RBAC. Okay. In AKS RBAC. Now, what is role? Role is simply permissions. Role is simply permissions, okay? It's a set of permissions rather. And by default, there is no permissions and every permission needs to be specifically called out, okay? So that's what the role is. And what is subject? Subject is, uh, you can call it identity or, or principle, person. Let me call it uh, uh, identity object, okay? You can call it principle or person or account, anything, you know, on which we can apply 
the roles and this identity then start accessing uh, those objects as per the role. And what is role binding then? It is a link. It is a link between role and the subject. Okay. Uh, now there, there is two kinds of bindings. So I need to specify that. This will make it more interesting. There are two kinds of role bindings. Oh, actually bindings, not the role bindings. There is two kinds of bindings. There is role binding and there is cluster role binding. And you can easily understand with the help of name cluster role means the role uh, which will allow you to work on the entire cluster that that binding would be the cluster role binding and the role binding is when uh, you are allowed to work on certain namespace not on the entire cluster okay and what this is doing this is binding role with the subject okay and now it totally depends what kind of permissions are those and those permissions will decide whether it's a role binding or cluster role binding if it is a role then it's role binding if it is a cluster role it would be a cluster role binding okay very simple now <clears throat> there are two layers of rbac in azure that is very important two layer of rbac in Azure Kubernetes cluster. And what are those? Well, as of now, we were talking about the Kubernetes RBIC. Okay. Till now, what we talked about is all Kubernetes RBIC, but we do have Azure RBIC, right? We do have Azure RBIC. So we've got two kinds, two types of RBIC. Now, let me make it very clear to you. If you are not using Azure AD or not integrating your Azure AD with your Kubernetes, then you need to manage your Kubernetes users, cluster, role, and RBAC separately. But it is always and always better secure if you are managing everything from a central uh, point and nothing better than Azure AD because you have all your users there. Now, once you integrate your Azure AD with the Kubernetes and you can manage everything from the Azure AD groups, that can be done. But for that, you need to make sure your Azure AD is integrated with your AKS and the certain amount of group and permission has been uh, created on the Azure AD. Uh, somebody was calling, so I just started checking on my phone. Sorry for that. All right, so uh, this is this is this is a very high a high level overview of uh, Kubernetes security. We talked about uh, defense in depth, how we can secure the Kubernetes from various layers. Okay. Now, the most important one is identity and access management. We have already talked about why it is so much important in this video and so many other videos as well. Then we talked about the Kubernetes RBAC, how we can utilize it, though it is an optional feature in Kubernetes I'm talking about. But uh, by default, when we create AKS, it is enabled. And uh, we can also integrate Azure AD while creating the Kubernetes cluster and also afterwards. It can be done now. It wasn't, uh, this feature wasn't there before, but now you can attach or integrate your Azure AD with the existing Kubernetes cluster as well. And then you can manage your users, your bindings from centralized place. So this is the very first video. And in next video, what we'll do, we'll try this RBAC, uh, Kubernetes RBAC and AKS RBAC in the lab. That will make it very clear how the integration works, how the centralized management of user permission works. So till then, take care, bye-bye.